Hello friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Let's have a look at problem 1258 together, synonymous synthesis. Uh, in this video, we're going to share a solution based on the disjoint set data structure and backtracking method. So the problem is like, we're given a list of equivalent string pairs called synonymous, where the pair of words in synonymous are equivalent. So we are also given a sentence called text. So we are required to return all possible synonymous sentences sorted lexicographically. So actually the specific requirement can be inferred from example one. So in example one, so we have a synonymous list. From the list, we can see that happy, joy, and cheerful are three words that are equivalent to each other. And sand, sorrow are two words that are uh, equivalent. So if we look at the text, so we see happy here, and we see sand here. So in the place um, happy, so we can actually replace this words by any of the three words, happy, joy, and cheerful. And at the place sand, actually we can replace it by any of the two equivalent words, sand and sorrow. So in the output, there are six strings. So three times two equals uh, six. Uh, that's example one. Uh, so now let's look at the constraint. So first is the synonymous length, which is bounded above by 10, not a large number. So the text consists of at most 10 words. It's also not very large. Essentially, we can do a br brute force solution in some sense. So the words of text are separated by single spaces. So this uh, this is going to play a role because we are going to split the text to build our results. So with that side, let's look at the method. So the first item here, uh, we're going to solve this problem using this joint set data structure as an aid and the replacement we're going to use backtracking. So this problem actually demonstrates the use of standard backtracking method. And the second item is about the idea. So we're going to use the disjoint set data structure to form clusters. Essentially, we're going to use the union method. And uh, words within each of the cluster actually are equivalent. So that's the main idea for this solution we're going to present. And the procedure is as follows. First, we're going to get the clusters using disjoint set. And the second, we are, do, uh, we are going to do the replacement um, by using a uh, backtracking method. So let me give a quick walkthrough of example one. So this is a synonymous and this is text. So the two clusters are here. This is one cluster and this is one cluster. So the dictionary key actually is a delegate of each of the clusters. So the return is a list consists of um, consisting of six strings based on the text. So here are three times two, as we explained in example one before. So our plan is the following. First, I'm going to implement a DSU class and apply it with the problem logic here. Second, I'm going to write a backtracking function and do the substitutions. So with that said, let's do the uh, work. I'm going to implement the DSU outside the uh, solution class with the purpose that this uh, DSU can be used in other problem DSU. So let's look first look at the initialization. So by now, actually, we practiced quite a number of um, union fund uh, problems. So the procedure should be routine. So self uh, roots, I'm going to use a dictionary. Regs, so it's also um, empty at the very beginning. So now let's look at the implementation of fand. So it's going to accept a word or string uh, in this problem. So word or string. So first I'm going to look at a case that is if w is not added to the roots. So if w not in uh, self roots. And I'm going to add it to the data structure. 
roots uh, w equals w self rex w equals 1. So this setting is very natural. So we're going to return w in this case. Otherwise, we're going to make a iterative call to retrieve the roots. I'm going to set introduce a variable and set it to w. And also, I'm going to use path compression in order to make it faster. So for, we are going to make a while loop to check if result equals or not the roots of result. If not, I'm basically going to set the result to be self roots result and do the iteration. Uh, but in between, I'm going to add the intermediate uh, node to the path. Um, result. So this way, we can do a path compression after we exit this uh, while loop. So once we exit this while loop, uh, we are going to have a state that is result equals its roots. Um, we're going to return this result. That's the thing. And for the path compression, we're going to do something like this. For node in path, we're going to set the roots of the intermediate node directly to uh, the result. So that's the so-called path compression. So very uh, natural. So next, we're going to look at the union method. The union method will accept two words. Let's call them W1 and W2. And basically, what we want to do is to check if the two words are in the same cluster. If not, we're going to merge them. So let's first find the root, root 1, root 2. So self uh, find w1, self find and w2. So this call also um, explains why we first implement the find method. Right. So once we've done that, we're going to check if they are the same or not. So if these two, guy, two guys are not the same, then we're going to merge them based on the rack. So if self rack uh, root 1 is greater, or e uh, greater, to or, uh, greater than or equal to that of uh, uh, root 2, then we're going to set the roots of root 2 to be root 1. And then we're going to increment the rack of root 1 by that of root 2. Let's change this one to be plus. So in the other case, we do the same thing, but in the reverse uh, order. So we're going to set the root for root 1 to be root 2. And then we're going to increment the racks for uh, root 2 by that of root one, uh, root 1. So notice that you can interpret this rack as the cluster size. So that's about it for the implementation of the union method. So for this problem, we're going to use the cluster. So let me write a small hyperfunction called get clusters. So uh, we're going to print a dictionary representation of the cluster. So we're going to iterate over the data structure, self, roots, items. So let's find, first find the root, self, find v, which is going to be the delegate of the cluster. So if root not in D, then we're going to set the value corresponding to this root as a single element set. Otherwise, we are going to add this current key, also key, to the set. So that's all about it. Then we're going to return this uh, representation. So once we've done that, we can move to the problem logic. So for the problem logic, so I'm going to uh, split into different uh, parts to make the logic clear. First, I'm going to uh, instantiate the DSU and make some preparations. So DSU is DSU. All right. So also we need to know uh, if, if we look at the uh, text string, uh, we want to know which word is in the similarity uh, set or class. So 
So we are going to make a full set to track this information. Um, then we are going to iterate w1, w2 uh, in synony synonymous. Um, then uh, we're going to add this two to the full set. So basically, full set uni with this uh, two guy, two guys. And then we're going to do dsu union for w1, w2 because they are similar, right? So for the purpose of this problem, I'm also going to get the clusters. So it's dsu get clusters. So that's about it. So actually, later we can print out this uh, clusters to get more information. So let me first comment this out. So with that said, let's look at the second step. The second step basically is to uh, backtracking and uh, prepare and the, do the prepare the result. So for that, um, first I'm going to um, split the sentence. So sentence. So we're going to split according to uh, the constraint because the text is separated by empty space. So this is the way we split that. Then we're going to track the length of this sentence. So the n is to be used for the backtracking. So um, next, uh, we're going to initialize a, uh, a variable called uh, result. The result will hold our final result. So first, the sentence, it is, uh, sentence itself or text itself is included. So we are going to initialize the result as this. So that's standard. So we can call uh, this is um, part one, a, part two a, and then we're going to do the backtracking. Let's call it part two b. So backtracking um, helper function. Uh, for this, actually, this is also uh, uh, standard, but uh, we need to pay attention to the backtracking step. So first, I'm going to define this backtracking function as replace. So the argument for this is the mm, input index. You can think of this replace function as a worker. So that's a sentence. We prepared a result. We are going to add to the result set. So let's do it. So if first the idx equals n, so we are at the end of the, uh, the sentence. Then we're going to mm, add the result to the mm, uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the results the set. So it's a result add. So we are going to use a join mm, uh, sentence. So notice sentence is the sentence here. <coughs> Um, this is uh, one step. So notice that we are going to return. So this is an um, um, essential. So otherwise, the function does not stop. So then what we want to do is that we check if uh, sentence um, idx um, is in uh, the full set. So if it's in the full set, we need to consider replacement or substitutions. Otherwise, we do not. right? So first, let's introduce a variable called or original. So it's the sentence um, idx, this corresponding word. And then we're going to get the corresponding cluster for this original uh, word. So let's call it substitute site, uh, which is clusters. Uh, we want to find the uh, key, right? So it's dsu um, find org. So this DSU find will find the delegate delegate of the word org in the cluster. Then we can retrieve the full cluster. That's the that's the explain this line for the subset. And then we're going to do the substitution. So for this, we're going to do a for loop for sub in subset. What we're going to do is that we're going to set the sentence idx to be the new word called sub. And then after we do this replacement, we call, make a recursion call for the backtracking function. But we inc 
increase the index by one, meaning that we are looking at next verse. So uh, that's it. Mm. So afterwards, we are going to do the backtracking step. That is, we change back the verse to be the original. So that's the backtracking step. So um, oh, once we done this, so we let's treat another condition. If the sentence idx is not in the full set, then we just uh, go ahead. So just uh, replace idx plus one. So that's about the full replacement function or the backtracking function. So with that said, we finished the helper function. So now let's look at step three. So we're going to call the helper function and prepare and do the return. And do the return. So uh, this is the trivial in some sense. We replace. So we're starting from index zero. And then we're going to return a sorted result. We are going to we are doing the sort according to the problem requirement. So that's the full solution for this problem. So I guess let's first do a special case check. Yeah, it passes example one. Now let's do a generic case check. Uh, it passes the generic case. So here uh, we can actually print out this uh, clusters so that we know more information. So this is the clusters. And uh, I guess with that said, uh, let's give a quick summary of the structure. And then that's about it for this video. So first, we implemented a disjoint set data structure to help um, solve this problem. And then we make preparations using the um, DSU implemented. And uh, after that, we write a backtracking function to um, help prepare the final results. And finally, we call the function and return the sorted result. So that's about it for this um, video. So you are welcome to check out other videos in my channel. Thank you very much.